China is looking to dominate the seas by improving its submarine fleet, including potentially a new killer sub. China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. This episode is sponsored by Incogni. You probably know the companies are collecting your personal data, but you may not realize just how many. Dozens, maybe hundreds, most of which you've never heard of, and you have no idea what they're doing with it. Incogni helps you stop them. I'll explain more at the end. So, China was once the world's greatest seafaring naval power in the early 1400s. Since then, not so much. As the Chinese Communist Party was taking over China in 1949, it launched the People's Liberation Army Navy, or PLA Navy. And they got a little help from the Soviet Union. While the PLA Navy has only recently obtained aircraft carriers, their submarine fleets are nothing new. They started with a humble fleet of Soviet whiskey-class diesel-electric submarines that were based heavily off of German U-boats captured during World War II. It wasn't until 1974 when China created its own homemade attack submarine, the Ming class. It was based on Soviet design input. Eventually, China entered the nuclear age of warships. They currently have five operational variants of submarines in their arsenal, including ones like this, designed to launch nuclear-tipped ballistic missiles. And now, according to the imagery intelligence company All Source Analysis, there is a possible new class of submarine at Huludao port in China. Analysts believe the submarine spotted in the dry dock could be a new G-model Shang-class variant, or it could be a completely new submarine altogether. We may be looking at the new Type 95, or Sui-class submarine, which would be China's first third-generation attack submarine. And it could be a dangerous, killer sub. The submarine was initially spotted in late April to early May. Since then, there's been a lot of speculation over what class it belongs to and whether or not we have caught a glimpse of China's newest attempt to wrest control of the high seas from the United States. In modern naval doctrine, submarines are a crucial aspect of any blue water navy that wants to expand beyond its boundaries. In the U.S., the Sea Wolf and Virginia classes of attack submarines have dominated the seas. The Virginia class entered services in the early 2000s. In addition to attack submarines, the U.S. Navy also has several ballistic missile submarines. These subs can lurk beneath the waves anywhere in the world and quickly launch a nuclear missile, which is a pretty important nuclear deterrent. Submarine warfare is an essential component of modern naval warfare, particularly when it comes to deterring, destroying, or defending large surface vessels. The Chinese Communist Party is especially concerned with the more modern American submarine fleets, which tend to run much quieter than their Chinese counterparts and have more combat capabilities. But China's navy is growing fast. And while the PLA may still be rookies when it comes to having a modern navy, the West does not take them lightly. That's because in addition to their growing fleet of submarines, the PLA navy also has anti-ship ballistic missiles. Those can be fired from certain types of submarines and destroy U.S. ships, like destroyers and even aircraft carriers. Last year, the PLA built a replica of a U.S. aircraft carrier in the desert in Xinjiang and used it for missile target practice. And preparing to launch missiles at U.S. ships is only one part of China's naval strategy. They also have aircraft carriers. When the first one was commissioned in 2012, everyone laughed. It was a remodel of an old Soviet carrier, and it had that stupid ski jump ramp. But 10 years on, things have changed. Now China is building its own carriers. And it's on track to build four this year. Another PLA Navy strategy goes beyond shipbuilding. They're using harassment to put pressure on the U.S. Navy. The Chinese Communist Party has pretty lax rules of engagement when it comes to asserting dominance over disputed waters, like by using their supposedly commercial fishing vessels to harass U.S. ships in the South China Sea, which China claims is their own territory. And U.S. warships are no stranger to PLA Navy vessels shadowing them. On occasion, PLA Navy sailors will even harass U.S. naval aviators on the radio near the Spratly Islands. 
While tensions between the U.S. and China and the South China Sea are nothing new, the addition of China's submarines beneath the waves may prove unsettling to the U.S. Navy. The U.S. slacked off on its anti-submarine warfare after the Cold War, but it stepped it up again with recent anti-submarine warfare operations, or ASW. ASW operations are carried out by naval assets ranging from aircraft to surface vessels to submarines. Plus, the U.S. Navy has begun doing joint training with allied nations. The point is to make sure different nations can work together in the event of a war with no nation in particular. With the Chinese Navy on a determined path towards modernization, and eyeing the ability to control navigation and commerce through military power, there is no telling what the future holds. And this episode has been sponsored by Incogni. Whenever you do anything online, there's a huge number of companies that collect your personal data. Look at all of them. And these are just the ones that have collected my data. These unscrupulous companies collect things like your name, your email, your address, even your social security number. What are they doing with this personal data? Well, they're buying it, selling it, and trading it to other companies to sell you products or create a profile of you. And when these companies get hacked, you could be in big trouble. And yes, I said when, not if. Because according to the former head of the NSA, China has hacked every major corporation in the U.S. So if your data is out there, it is not safe. And that's why you need to get your data taken offline. That's what Incogni does. Incogni forces these companies to delete your data using all the applicable laws. Theoretically, you could do it yourself if you knew what the laws were and how to write those companies with the correct type of request slash threat to remove your data. But that's an impossible amount of work. That's why Incogni handles it for you. Just a few months after signing up, Incogni has already gotten my details removed from 19 of these data brokers, with 35 more in progress. And I didn't have to do anything after signing up. So check out Incogni using the link below or go to incogni.com slash uncensored. The first 100 people to use the code uncensored will get 20% off. Get your personal data off the market with Incogni. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching China Uncensored.